Welcome aboard the John Wyatt Edgar USS Midlife Crisis. I am here to review an album from my ever-growing vinyl collection. If you are here seeking uninformed, unsolicited musical opinions, you've come to the right place. Because for some reason, I now feel compelled to join the thousands of amateur music reviewers on YouTube and do one of my own. This album right here, if you can see it, great. This is Doolittle by the Pixies. And if you can't see it here, you probably saw it in the video's thumbnail. This album is from 1989. And hey, guess what? You have been randomly chosen to be the first album that I review in its entirety. This is Debaser. I'm going to tell you right now, love this song. Completely unhinged opening to an album. As the song progresses, I feel like the vocals get more and more unhinged. I urge you to listen to this, even if you don't care for this band or particularly want to hear this album. This is such a fun, just wacky song with all the screaming. I loved it. As you can see here, I gave it 10 points. You're welcome. Track two, Tame. This song is anything but tame. It's got a great bass line, and that's something that a lot of these songs have, is a great bass line. There's just some wicked screaming here in this song. I thought, surely, this track can't be any crazier than the first track, and I was wrong. It does a couple things to me that seem like time signature changes, but again, I'm not a music expert, so that's just speculation, but I did give it 10 points, and so should you. Wave of Mutilation, this song takes me back really to the Guitar Hero slash Rock Band days. This song was on one or both of them. And honestly, this is the first song on the album where it feels like the band got together and said, hey, let's write something catchy that actually sounds like a song. Uh, I'm giving this one a 10. But this one is a 10 because it's just a nice, short, catchy, kind of pop punk song. They do do just a little bit of trickeration at the end of the course with time signatures. Nothing crazy, but just enough to keep me entertained. Again, 10 points. Big nostalgia factor with the video game connection. Highly recommend. Track four, I bleed, and I am reminded of early Blur or early Weezer records when I listen to this. And I'm a huge Blur fan. Not so much Weezer. But this definitely reminds me of that like leisure era Blur. It does kind of lower the energy. It's a little bit slower, you know, than the first three songs, which are all amazing. I only gave this one a nine. It's just a little bit of a letdown in that regard. It's still a very good song. The dual vocals on this song are fantastic. That is a standout of this song. So, yes, still very good. Still a nine. Do listen. Do enjoy. You're welcome. Uh, here comes your man. This is another 10 for me, dog. This song right here is just so well written. It is so catchy. And much like Wave of Mutilation at track three, it's like the band got together and said, let's make the catchiest song possible. Like this song is so good and so well written. It almost feels like it's a cover song. It almost feels like they didn't write it. It's got just such a great, fantastic melody. You can sing along to it really easily. This is honestly probably like the first song by them I actually heard, like when I was in high school or maybe younger. I don't even know if I knew what band it was at the time, but I definitely remember hearing this when I was younger and thinking, that's a great song. And I hope to be reviewing one of this band's albums when I'm 40. Now we have Dead. This is track six, plugging along. This has got a great rhythm to it. It uses a lot of dissonance, you know, weird chords and stuff like that, which I really like. But you have to do it tastefully. There's a way to do it. And they've absolutely done that here. This sounds like a psychotic version of what a car song is, is, is kind of how I put it. And I get some more blur vibes from it as well. Not the best song on the album. Still very good. I'm very impressed so far with the first six tracks of this album. I gave this nine points out of ten. So really only two near misses here. Just a fantastic, you know, opening sequence to this album so far. Track seven, in a way, this kind of feels like the spiritual title track because there is indeed a monkey on the cover of the album. And to my knowledge, there is no mention of the album's title in any song. Um, it utilizes a lot of spoken word in the vocals, which I usually don't like, but they actually pulled it off here. The chorus is very dreamy. They use some additional instrumentation here. I can't tell if it's real strings or synth. 
I don't have an ear for that. I'm not a, I'm not a record producer. You can look all that stuff up. I don't really care. It just sounds good. I gave it 10 points. Track eight, Mr. Greaves. So this is officially like the halfway point of the album. If you're going by the number of tracks, but on the vinyl version that I have, this actually starts side two. Kind of gives me 311 meets Primus vibes early on. Uh, the intro is definitely very unusual. But then once it gets into the full band portion, just a fantastic song. One of the faster, defter showings of musicianship on this album. You can tell that the band is incredibly skilled and talented, the way that they execute this song nearly flawlessly. Congratulations, Pixies, on yet another 10. This song is called Crackety Jones. Another song that I gave a 10 to. I'm feeling like maybe I was like a little too generous. But let's be honest, this may be the only album review I ever record because I'll probably get bored with it. It's super fast. This is a great way to kick off the second half of the record. If you consider this the official start of the second half of the album, it's a fun song. I can't imagine how cool this song would be live. I'm sure they've played it live. I've never seen this band live. But I would want them to play this song and I would probably give it a 10. I would be yelling 10 like 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 Ty Dillinger, if you remember that reference. Uh, track 10, interesting title. I feel like this is probably like a fan favorite. For me, I gave it an eight. That means at this point in time, listening to the record, this is my least favorite song on the record. But eight is still very good. Great beat. Almost kind of like spy movie riff that comes in at the beginning. Here's what I don't like about the song. I don't like the whistling. I don't like the sultry delivery of the vocals. But there is certainly a mood or an intent behind this song. I have no doubt that they executed whatever that intent was flawlessly. For me, just a little awkward in parts, so I'm going to give it an 8. It's still a very good song. Uh, number 13, baby. That's a little confusing. We could have made this track 13. It kind of feels epic in like an experimental way. Like if you remember that Metallica album, Reload, like the second half of that album. Certainly, this band does not sound like Metallica, I think. And just, it's strange, but it's also like... Just very epic. Yeah, man, it's a cool song, man. He's saying the same words over and over. It's got a nice long instrumental part, which we sorely needed. Again, all of these songs are short. This is the longest song on the record. The one thing that that kept this from being a 10 for me is the fade out. I'm not a fan of the fade out. That's a cheap move. There goes my gun. Okay, so this song, <laughs> check this out. If you go back and listen to track five, which is Here, Here Comes Your Man, and then listen to this song immediately after it, it, this song almost feels like the anti version of that song. And in that way, it's like very clever. Like the chorus is actually delivered very similarly. It's, it's, they probably did this on purpose, but it kind of doesn't feel like an actual, I guess, song on its own in that sense. It feels more like an interlude or like a reprieve track. I only gave it a seven as a result. It's shorter. You know, obviously, I don't hate it, don't hate any of these songs. But it, it feels gimmicky. It feels like a gimmicky song. <laughs> if you name a song, hey, you better pull this off, okay? And they did, because obviously I gave it a 10. The song has a great build to it. And in a way, it has so many different, like, cool things that the album does as a whole. The bass line, the vocal synergy, just the, you know, the specific texture of the guitars. Some of the melody motifs they do throughout the album. This almost feels like kind of an amalgamation of the album as a whole. Here's one song you can listen to from this album that will give you the, the sense of the album in its entirety. I feel like it has a little bit of everything. Uh, and I gave it a 10. The album is, as a whole is trending in that direction, if you haven't noticed. Now, here's a surprise. This is the lowest rated song. I only gave it six. This song feels like it does not fit on this album at all. It's very jarringly out of place, okay? The vocals are very loud, over the top, borderline obnoxious at times. There is some good instrumentation to it, but it's just way too slow. It feels like a sonic experiment. In the context of this album, it really doesn't fit. On its own, yeah, I mean, it's an above average song. I would not have put it on this record. I give it a six. That's the best I could do for you. And then we finish it out strong. Last track, Gouge Away. This is certainly a return to form, especially if you've been listening to the album in order. The last song kind of brings you out of it. This one brings you right back. It'll make you want to listen to the whole album over again. So in that sense, it's very brilliant. There's some, not so much time signature changes, but just some abrupt measure changes, especially like in the chorus. Um, and the chorus is like, it's a very, what I would call a soaring chorus. It really gets at you. You know, it's really out there. 
and I really like this song. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, I want to listen to this album again. Now I didn't because I didn't have time, but it, that, that's how I felt. And so I gave it a 10. Now I wanted to give all these albums a score on a scale of 100. So get your, you know, math ready here. I took the average of the songs and I multiplied it by seven. So we got 64 points, which means on average, I was giving them a nine or higher sequencing. I thought this was great. The album flowed really well. Again, I would not have done that track 14. I probably would have omitted it from the album completely. I give it a nine. The aesthetic as far as from an art style and from a what were they trying to do in the studio, they definitely created their own sound. They influenced a crap ton of bands. So I got to give them an eight. This album definitely feels like they had a vision and they took it and ran with it. The only thing that I kind of skimp on here of points is production. I like a nice polished sound. And I know that the intent was probably not to do that for this record. I just thought the production was a little bit of a letdown. So I gave it a four. You got 85 out of 100. Where I'm from, that's like a B, maybe a B plus. So that's it for that album. I may do more in the future. Feel free to like or comment or subscribe or, or any combination of those. And we'll see if I do another one. I really don't know. And I'm sure you don't care.